grow, a green approach to growth is especially important in the lowest income countries where expected growth and population rates are relatively higher and where high dependency on natural resources and agricultural livelihoods accentuate vulnerability. Poor people are not only strongly, but also disproportionately affected by environmental degradation and climate change. Thus, uh, there is a need for pro-poor sustainable development. Green growth is not more costly compared to business as usual when all costs are considered and the environmental services from natural capital are valued and the needs and rights of future generations are taken into account. The result will also be more sustainable and livable societies. Green economy is seen as having great potential for delivering a triple bottom line of job, create, uh, job creating economic growth coupled with environmental protection and social inclusion. For a green economy to reach its potential on a large scale, there is a need for adequate policies at the national level that provide an enabling environment for investing in pro-poor sustainable enterprises as well as facilitate public-private partnerships. Poor people's rights, rights to natural resources need to be recognized and respected, which also implies empowerment and a greater voice in decision-making. Poor people need to have access to markets and supply chains for green products and services so that natural resources are sustainably used and restored. One practical example of this uh, stems from the good cooperation Norway has had with Vietnam in the uh, implementation of specific regulations based on the new fisheries laws adopted in 2004. Here, fish farmers in marine areas have now gained rights to the use of marine areas for fish farming through one of the new regulations. According to their own story, they now can use these rights to have access to bank loans in order to enhance and improve their operations and thereby improve the livelihoods of their families. Legislation can be a powerful tool for many poor families when their rights to access natural resources are enforced. The value of ecosystem services and other natural resources must be rightly recognized and markets for these goods must be created in a way that ensures their sustainable use while adding to the GDP of a country. This is why there is a need for tools such as the Economics of Ecosystems and Biodiversity or TEP initiative hosted by UNEP and the World Bank's Wealth Accounting and Valuation of Ecosystem Services or WAVES partnership to make sure that the measuring of wealth of a country also takes into account natural capital and highlights the need to use it in a sustainable manner. An example of research cooperation, optimizing the use of natural resources and resulting in improved livelihoods among the private producers is again from the fish farming sector in Vietnam, where farmers, through the use of better quality tilapia fingerlings from a research station, have gained higher productivity and better yields, and thereby improved their income. So when public research institutes extend their findings to the private industries in this way, public-private partnership can function well as an approach to improving livelihoods. Land is one of the most important and basic natural resource, resources on our planet, but it is unfortunately being rapidly <coughs> degraded. <coughs> Investing in sustainable land management fits well into a green growth framework as it makes economic sense by boosting agricultural production, protecting the very valuable soil resource, contributing to climate change mitigation, and being pro-poor. 
given that poor people who are dependent on the land for survival are most directly affected by land degradation. Sustainable use of natural resources and environmentally acceptable exploration of extractive industries depends on good governance. To mitigate corruption, managers in both the private and public sector must be held accountable, which is a condition for successful public-private partnerships. This implies openness and access to information about terms and conditions in contracts and their fulfillment. Without access to information, public interest cannot be defended neither by audit institutions, parliaments, media, nor civil society in general. Clear rules, open tenders, and selection processes are also crucial for good and sustainable governance of natural resources. I would also like to underline the importance of enforcement of rules and laws designed to protect the environment and to secure sustainable use of natural resources. This is the reason why Norway is one of the major supporters of the Interpol Environmental Law Enforcement Program, supporting joint law enforcement operations by concerned, concerned countries. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, uh, let me uh, end uh, this statement by welcoming this uh, uh, public-private dialogue on green growth in the greater, greater Mekong sub-region and wishing all participants Good luck in their networking and uh, deliberations. Thank you.